Welcome to the first episode of a new series that will introduce you to birds, to bird watching and to some other wildlife along the way. My name's David Chandler and we've come to Welney. Welney is in Norfolk, just over the Cambridgeshire border. It's a wildfowl and wetlands trust reserve. In the winter it heaves with birds, so if you're a beginner to bird watching it can be a bit confusing trying to sort them all out, but we're going to help you with that. And this episode today is a crash course in ducks. It's ducks for beginners. <laughs> so you might be wondering what I mean by, by a dabbling duck. Well, broadly, you can divide ducks into ducks that dive and ducks that dabble. And the dabbling ducks, they're finding their food near the surface of the water or maybe just a little bit underneath when they upend, which is when they, they tip forward and they, they point their backside to the sky and they get their food out of the water using their beaks. Well, I'm gonna show you how they do it using some of this, this really technical kit. Okay, so, here's my lake. Okay, it's not a particularly big lake, but that's my lake. Now, let's get some high quality lake water into my lake. There we go. Now, we need some dabbling ducks, of course. We have here two dabbling ducks, clearly different species. Um, I'm not actually sure what species these are. They're not in any of my, my field guides, but we'll work with them anyway. So we've got our ducks and we're gonna put some food in there for them to, to dabble. And this is just seed and real dabbling ducks they might be filtering out seeds, they might be filtering out uh, little invertebrates, bits of plant material. Now, let's zoom in on the beaks of these birds. Here you go, I've zoomed in. So, tea strainer. So effectively, when they're dabbling, it's kind of like running your tea strainer, running your beak through the water, filtering out some food. Only real birds do it a whole lot better than I did because They've got comb-like structures down the, the sides of their beaks and they pull the water in at the front of the beak, they push it out the sides and as it goes through those combs you can imagine the food just gets caught in the combs and they eat it and that's how you dabble. So enough of that, let's go, let's get rid of this, let's go and look at some real dabblers. So let's start with this duck. This is a, a mallard. It's a male mallard. It's a bird that's easy to identify and it's one you're probably familiar with. So there's the, the green head, the white collar, the, the brown chest. Down at the other end, you've got those lovely, funky, curly black tail feathers and that shiny blue patch on the wing, which is called the, the speculum. There's a bit of duck jargon for you. That's the male. Females are not as well marked, not quite as easy to identify and, and ducks are like that really. The adult males are often very different to the adult females. So when you're new to it, here's my recommendation. Start with the males. I'd recommend you get familiar with gadwall. They're, um, they're not particularly colourful and they're a bit of a birder's bird, but they're, they're well worth a, a close look. So on the male, you've got that, that distinctive black stern, that black bit at the back end and there's a nice white flash in the wing, but get a good close look at their sides as well, because they're a lovely, they're called vermiculations on the side, which is a word that's rooted in, in little worms. Um, and if you look closely, well, they're kind of meant to look like little wiggly worms, those, those marks on the side. So that, that's gadwall. So this is teal. It's our, our smallest duck. And if you see them near Mallard, you'll get a sense of just how, how small they are. So the males have got brown and, and green, on the head, um, a lovely sort of yellow patch at the back end and a horizontal white stripe on the side. So that's teal. So let's take a look at the, the shoveler, another of uh, the dabbling ducks. There's no, no prizes for working out why it's called a shoveler. If you just take a look at that bill, it's got a, a massive shovel-like bill, so a massive tea strainer effectively. So the male, green head, big brown patch on the flank. And when they fly, they've got a, a lovely uh, bit of pale blue in the wing. 
Now, one of the interesting things about shovelers, sometimes they'll feed in small groups, going around in circles, uh, each, uh, each bird following the bird in front, and what they're doing is they're feeding on the, the food that's concentrated in the wake of the bird in front. So if you see shovelers going around in a circle, that's what they're up to. So these are widgeon, and they're a bit different. They are dabblers, but they're grazers as well. So you'll often see them out of the water, munching away at, at vegetation. Now, in their guts, they don't have any bacteria to help them break down the, the tough cellulose cell walls on the, on the plant material that they're eating. So what they do is they eat grit and they take that into their gizzard, which is their stomach, just to help them you know, break in to whatever nutrients they can get out of, of the plant cells. So the male, gingery head, bit of a yellowish flash kind of on the forehead, on, on the front of the head, um, pinkish breast, nice black and white um, pattern at the back as well. When you see them out of the water, take a look at the, the belly, it, it's white, and it looks like they've been swimming in, in, in white emulsion. Um, it, it's worth learning the, the widgeon call as well. They make this, this nice whistling noise. And, you know, learn that, you'll hear it, you'll pick widgeon out and you'll be able to impress your birding friends just by saying, oh, there's widgeon. So this is a pintail. It's our, our well, the final dabbling duck that we'll look at today. Um, it's, a, it's a really elegant, handsome bird. There's a bit of black and white at the back end. Of course, there's a, a long pin tail. And on the males, you've got this lovely sort of chocolate brown on the head and neck with a, a white line stretching up into it. That's a pintail, great bird.